Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. This video is an exam paper walkthrough of the 2022 Paper 2 exam paper, specifically Section B, the biopsychology topic. In a previous video, I gave an overview of the paper with some general tips and advice for Paper 2, so do check that out if you haven't already done so. You'll find links to the exam paper and mark scheme in the description below, as well as links to videos on the parts of biopsychology covered in these questions. Remember to pause the video and have a go at the questions yourself first, looking for the command words, topic and marks available before I walk you through it. In the biopsychology section for this paper there are three short questions and a 16 mark essay. Question 5 is a multiple choice question which says which of the following neurons carries electrical impulses towards the brain? Shade one box only. One mark. First of all, make sure to complete multiple choice questions correctly as per the guidelines on the screen. It would be a shame not to get the mark because you didn't fill it in correctly when you knew the answer. Secondly, a tip with answering multiple choice questions is to rule out the ones you are sure are incorrect to help narrow it down. This question is testing your understanding of the different types of neuron. If you've watched the video on neurons and the nervous system you may remember this diagram or this diagram. Here we see that motor neurons carry information from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system, the opposite of the question, so we can cross that out. Relay neurons carry information between sensory neurons and motor neurons. Interneurons are another name for relay neurons, so we can cross both of those out, which leaves sensory sensory neurons, and sensory neurons carry information from your peripheral nervous system to your central nervous system, your central nervous system being made up of your brain and spinal cord, which means D is the correct answer. Question 6 is another multiple choice question which says which one of the following is not a way of studying the brain, shade one box only, one mark. Just be mindful that this is a multiple choice question that says not. Be careful not to miss this. This question is testing your understanding of ways of studying the brain, and there are four of them named on the specification for you to know. fMRIs study blood flow in the brain whilst performing a task. EEGs measure the electrical activity in the brain, and ERPs are related to EEGs in that they study the electrical activity in the brain in response to a specific stimulus which leaves ECGs, and the word cardio that you see in the word relates to the heart and not the brain, so A is the correct answer. Question 7. Describe the divisions of the nervous system, 6 marks. The command word is describe, so this is testing your AO1 knowledge and understanding of the nervous system. The question is focused on the divisions of the nervous system, so you want to be able to describe this diagram showing your knowledge of all the parts. Make sure to use as much key terminology as possible to access the higher mark bands. So you could write something like this. The nervous system is divided into the central and peripheral nervous systems. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system consists of sensory and motor neurons to carry sensory and motor information to and from the central nervous system and also enables reflex actions. The autonomic nervous system acts largely unconsciously, it's involuntary. The autonomic nervous system is divided into the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, where the sympathetic nervous system prepares us for fight or flight, and the parasympathetic nervous system providing rest and digest functions. And finally, question 8 says, discuss localization of function in the brain, 16 marks. The command word for this question is discuss, which typically means that we need to provide some knowledge of a theory or study, A01, and then evaluate it in terms of its strengths and limitations to form a discussion. A typical 16 mark discuss essay question is broken down to 6 marks for A01 and 10 marks for A03. For the A01, always start with the big picture before going into the details, so you can could start by defining localization of function. Localization of function is the theory that different areas of the brain are responsible for different functions or behaviors. Then you could identify and describe each of the areas of the brain that are thought to be localized. The motor area of the brain is responsible for movement, 
and is located at the back of the frontal lobe. The somatosensory area is home to the brain's primary sensory area, a region where the brain interprets information from other areas of the body. It's located behind the motor area in the parietal lobe. The visual area is located in the occipital lobe and is responsible for sight. The auditory area is located in the temporal lobe and is responsible for hearing. Broca's area is thought to be responsible for speech production and is located in the left frontal lobe. And Wernicke area is thought to be responsible for speech comprehension and is located in the left temporal lobe. Next, you could describe studies and research which will overlap as AO3 evaluation if used effectively. For your AO3, there are many pieces of research you could include, but as an example, you could write about Phineas Gage. He had an iron rod a meter long go through his left cheek, up through his left eye, and out of his skull on the top of his head. This iron rod left him with significant damage to parts of his left frontal lobe and led to changes in his behaviour. It was reported that this normally calm and reserved man now showed a different set of personality characteristics, often lacking social inhibition. This suggests that the frontal lobe may be involved with our personality and specifically with emotional processing and decision making. Patient HM, who suffered from severe epilepsy and as a result had his hippocampus removed. However, whilst this stopped his seizures, it left him with memory problems. HM was unable able to form any new long-term memories. He could remember things before the surgery, but couldn't form memories after the surgery. His short-term memory was fine, but he couldn't transfer any of this information to long-term memory. Therefore, the case study of HM provides support for localization of function in the brain, with the hippocampus thought to be responsible for learning and memory. You could then, at this point, add to your discussion by critiquing this research, making sure, of course, to link this criticism to the issue of localization of function and not just make a simple criticism of a study. So you could write that the research into localization of function is rather limited. This is because the evidence for Phineas Gage and patient HM are based on unique individual cases. This is a problem because it raises questions about the extent to which the findings from such small samples can be applied to the wider population. Therefore, it could be argued we should be cautious about localization of function in the brain if the evidence supporting it lacks generalizability. Another study study or case you could include is Louis Victor Le Bon, also known as Patient Tan, who was studied by Paul Broca. Patient Tan had problems producing speech and could only pronounce the word Tan, and following his death, Broca conducted a post-mortem on his brain and discovered a large lesion in the left frontal lobe. This discovery provides support for the idea of localization of function in the brain, as it suggests that this area of the brain, referred to as Broca's area, is responsible for speech production. You could then discuss this research with challenging evidence. Drunk as a tal in 2007 challenges localization of function in patient Tan. This is because they conducted an MRI scan on patient Tan's brain, which showed that other areas of the brain were also damaged, and as a result, may have been involved in his failure to produce speech beyond simply Broca's area. Therefore, these findings raise questions about localization of function in the brain, particularly for language, and suggest that a more holistic understanding is needed where other areas of the brain are involved. I've provided more evaluation here than you would need to write about in the exam, but I've given you examples of what you could include and how you could provide counter arguments that are carefully focused on the question. So that completes section B. Links to videos on any of the parts of biopsychology covered in this video can be found below. And in the next video, we'll go through section C on research methods. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.